let's continue to give him praise in this place. Lord Jesus, we magnify your name. We glorify you in this place, Lord Jesus. Church, we're going to get into a time of prayer as we do every single week. Let's remember friends and family. Let's remember people that you've invited out today. I see some new faces. Let's believe God that they'll speak with them. Anyone online, believe um, that God would speak to you and speak to your family as well. Church, let's get into a time of prayer. Let's believe God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We give you praise. We worship your name, O oh God. We thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together in your name and cry out to you for your intervention into our lives, for your involvement into our situations. Lord Jesus, I pray for a word and season. God, give us our hearts to be willing to be obedient to what you say to us today, oh God, that we would leave this place knowing exactly what you want to do and how you're going to do it. Father God, I pray, Lord Jesus, for a certainty when we leave this place of how you are moving in our lives and the lives of our friends, our family. Lord, I pray above all that your name may be glorified and may be magnified in this house and in every single house, Lord Jesus. I bring before you, oh God, all those who are weary, who are struggling in their faith, oh God, that they've, been, they've come to the right place, that you would meet with them in this place, oh God, that you would give them the strength they need, the confidence that they need in your mighty name. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, for you to reveal yourself to each and every soul in this place, everyone online, oh God, that you would show yourself strong, oh God, show yourself the way you'd like to be seen, oh God, towering above anything else that this world can offer. Lord, I pray above all that we may leave this place crying out your glory, magnifying your holy name, Lord Jesus, that every hand may be glorifying your name. Every knee shall be bowed in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we all pray. Amen. Church, amen. Let's all take our seats. I want to start by greeting everyone in the building today. Thank you for joining us. Everyone online as well, thank you for taking the time for, to, to stream. Um, some quick housekeeping. Uh, make sure you are wearing your mask um, if you aren't. Uh, exempt from wearing it and also let's try and make sure that after the service there's, there aren't any events going on so if you please make as speedy an exit as physically possible um, just so we make sure we're sticking with COVID guidance on that. Um, some announcements for the week. Um, tomorrow we will be having our marriage classes we do on uh, on the second and th uh, fourth Friday Saturday Thursday of every single month. Um, so uh, if you do want to take part in that, you're married in this place, you want to join us on that, it will be on Zoom, 7 p.m. Speak to me after the service. If you're online, you can contact us through the website. We'll also be having growth tools this Friday at 7 p.m. again on Zoom. If you want more details um, with that, your fellowship group uh, should have the link in there. And if they don't, speak to me after the service. And again, if you're online on our website, we do have information on all the events um, in our calendar and on those events, I'll also have the link to a lot of our events there so you can join that way. Saturday, we have our men's D, as we do on the fourth Saturday of every single month. There'll be a men's D, 7 p.m. on Zoom. All men are invited. Uh, your host will be able to send you the details to that. And again, speak to me if you need more information on that. And then finally, this um, Sunday, big uh, event, we have Pastor Ernie Topping coming down. 3 p.m. service begins, so come out to that. We want to see you there. Also, after the service, there will be um, a young adults event. Another level will be putting something on um, about fatherhood or the lack thereof. So join us if you want to know more about that. You don't want to miss out on that. I'm going to finish off with an encouraging word on offering. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, Paul speaks about people's sharing or their ability to share with, with each other gives them confidence that they will also share in the comfort that's soon to come. How many know we're all confident that we're going to share in the um, comfort that God is going to provide in heaven? And what the Bible says here is that where, where it starts is in our sharing in everything. So even in your giving, if you're willing to share what you're doing, is you're putting a stamp on it to say, I'm here to stay. So stay faithful with your giving. All giving is online. So make sure you are referencing the right type of giving, whether it's your pledge or your regular offering or tithe. Um, and I think that's everything for announcements that I've got. Um, today we have a special guest preacher. Um, 
a brother, a, amen, a brother of ours, Pastor Everett, who is pastoring with um, Keisha in Crawley. Let's give him all a mighty hand of praise. Amen. You guys hear me? Yeah, good. I um, just want to say thank you to my pastor for giving me the opportunity to preach. Um, if you've got your Bibles, turn to Psalms 55 verse 22. Psalms 55 verse 22. Um, a few weeks ago, I on outreach. So I was on outreach in Crawley. And basically, I met this young man. I met him probably about maybe November time of last year. So I met him around November time. And I was telling him about we're well, starting a new church, you need to come. Um, he said, yeah, I'll take the flyer. So as I'm outreaching on my own, I'm going around speaking to people, I end up seeing him. He's on an e-scooter, I believe it is. I'm not too sure if that's what you call it, e-scooter. Um, he's on an e-scooter. He ends up seeing me. He stops. So I cross the road, and I'm talking to him. And as I'm talking to him, you know, I, I end up talking to him, and I say, you know, you need to get safe. You know, he's rolling around in the scooter, like, faddied up and that like hoodie and everything, can't see his face, looks like a ninja. And basically, he ends up basically breaking down what's going on in his life. So he's 22, he's not, he's not at uni, he's not at college or anything like that. Um, he's involved in crime to the point that he's got multiple court cases. Not only that is that he's got great fear because he can't go to a certain area. If he goes to a certain area, he might get stabbed. If he goes to a certain area, he might get robbed. Not only that, he's got drugs on him. So to the point that as I'm talking around, um, on the street with him, he keeps looking. He keeps looking at people, looking at him, and he's like, no, no, we need to move. We need to move. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I walk him up to the chicken shop, and we're talking, and he's saying, look, like, I used to be a Christian. I used to go to church. I used to get baptized. But the life that I'm living now is too much for me to bear. The life that I'm living now, right now, it's too much for me to bear. It's like I'm carrying something. I'm carrying the weight of something. And as he was speaking to me, I started to think about this young man is, is only 22. He's barely lived. And what he's saying is I've got a burden that I'm unable to take off me. I've got a burden that, and it's too much. And as, I've, as I'm speaking to him, I'm saying to him, listen, Jesus can take that burden out of you. Jesus is able to take that burden. And we, we're, to, we're talking, we swap numbers. And he said, you know what? Let me know when the church is open. And today I want to preach a message about giving God our burden. That when we give our burden, he unburdens us and gives us rest. So if you've got um, Psalms chapter 55 verse 22, say amen. If you're online, just say amen. We receive this in faith. Amen. The Bible says that cast your burden onto the Lord and he will sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Let me pray. Father, we thank you, God, for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to be here. Lord, I pray for this word, that this word will receive someone's heart today. There are people here who are carrying things from the past. I pray, Father, Lord, that you will speak to them, that you will challenge them, oh God, that, Father, that they will come to you with their burden, that, Father, you'll be able to move in their life. I pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And the church says... And the real church says, Amen. Amen. So I want to say to cast your burden onto God. The Bible says that we must cast our burden to God. See, the word burden means to a, a heavy a load that you're carrying or a heavy load that you're carrying or a care that you're carrying. See, God says that the God says that we must cast our burden onto him. What he's saying is basically that we must cast our load over to him. See, David was a man who had burdens in his life if you know anything about this scripture the background of it is God is um sorry not God David is communicating with God he's praying to God and as he's praying to God he's talking to him about his burden that he's he's got in David's life there are ed his enemies want to do him harm his enemies want to kill him not only that the Bible also says that he, he's got um, his friends stab him in the back they betray him and as he's going through all of this, these burdens in his life become too much for him to bear. See, you and I are very similar, like David, that we've got burdens in our life. There are burdens in our life that we are carrying. Some people hear it's your worries. You are carrying burdens of worries. You are worrying about your job. We're in a season now where people's jobs are going like this. People's incomes are going like this. And some of us are worrying about this thing. 
is today going to be my last day at work? If I lose my job, what's going to happen to me? Not only that, some of you guys are worrying about finances. If I lose my job, how am I going to make money? If I lose my job, how am I going to pay for certain things? How am I going to pay for my house? How am I going to pay for the car? How am I going to pay to get around? How am I going to pay for the food? How can I provide for my kids and my wife? See, not only that, some of us are worrying about friendship in terms that we, we're falling out with people and we're thinking to ourselves, do they like me, do they not? Are they there for me or are they not? Or are we, or are we thinking to ourselves, no one's there for me. See, again, we're in a season of lockdown where you can't see people as you used to. Everything is either Zoom or FaceTime. Even church is online, but you need to come back to church. But that's another sermon. But anyway... But what about the, wo- the burdens of your worries when it comes to your friendship? What about the fears? The fears of the unknown. When lock- is lockdown going to be lifted off? If lockdown is open, what's going to happen? Are we going to go into a third wave? Are we gonna- is this going to happen? What about my health? What about this disease? Am I going to catch it? If I catch it or my loved one catches it, what's going to happen? And all of these things that most of us f- are going through. What about depression? Depression's gone off the roof. Literally, has gone off the roof. That people nowadays are feeling more and more alone. More and more alone. More and more depressed. See, the reality is these things, these burdens that we're carrying in our lives sometimes hold us down. They hold us down in our singleness. They hold us down in our marriage. They hold us down in, uh, as a parent. See, even the weight of being a parent is, is something else. I've got two boys and let, let me tell you something. When they said you, one, one of them can't go to school, listen, it, it, my house became a playground. My house became a playground. They'll, they'll go to bed late and they'll wake up early. <laughs> I, I don't get how that works. You go to bed late, and you go to, but you wake up early. Yes, and the burden of being a parent is tough. Not only that, what about ministry? Going into the ministry. This time, it's, listen, it's a, it's a very interesting season. Very interesting season, but listen, these things sometimes can hold us down. The world can hold us down in terms of what it, what it says a man should be or what a woman should be. If you haven't made it to a certain, if you don't, if you haven't made that much money at a certain age, then you're rubbish. If you don't have a career, then you, you're rubbish. If you don't have, drive that car or live in a certain place, then you're, 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 you haven't made it. See, the reality is that these things can hold us down like a weight is on us. Most of us are carrying weights like it's a backpack. It's like we've put a a rucksack on you, and basically you're, and we've stuffed it down with weight. And what happens is you're carrying, you're going through life, literally weighing, holding you down. See, I'm not a gym guy, but most gym guys will be like, you know what, that's easy. But if we said to you, carry this thing every hour, every minute, every second, of your life. I mean, no, these things can wear us down. See, this is what David was going through. David's burden were weighing him down. See, when, our bur- when we are carrying our burdens, many times we are left exhausted or overwhelmed. I remember, this is quite embarrassing, I remember going to Congo with um, Pastor, not the second time, the first time. Oli went the second time. We had a good time the first time and the second time. And I'm not sure if he remembers this, but I remember when we got there, Pastor was like to me, Pastor Courtney was like to me, you know what, at seven, we got up at seven, um, not get up at seven, sorry, pray at, se- um, pray at six, get up, um, go to the gym at seven, and then by eight o'clock we're, in, uh, we're having breakfast. So I ain't been to the gym in a while, but obviously I'm counting on my youth. Pastor's a, li- not, a little bit older than me. So I'm like, okay, like, I, at the time Pastor was going to the gym, so I'm like, look, I'm going to rely on my youth. And basically what happened is we're going to the gym and, you know, we're exercising, we're exercising, and then it's, it's the main event, it's the, it's the bench press, it's the main event. So I'm like, listen, okay, you know, I, I, at the time, I, there's a limit, but you don't reveal what your limit is. You never re- if you're going to the gym for the first time with someone, you don't reveal what your limit is. So I'm like, okay, cool, so he says 50, I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> Do it quick. Okay, cool. He does it quick, I'm like, okay, cool. 60 goes, does it again. I'm like, okay, cool. My well, max is 70 at the time, but I didn't want to let him know that. So it's 70 comes, so I'm like, <laughs> last, last three are like. <sighs> so I'm like, okay, maybe he's going to stop at 80. 
He, get, he goes all the way up, I think, above 100, 110, I believe. Listen, and then I'm like, okay, cool. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sharing with him that I can't do this. So I'm like, listen, let's go. Let's go. No, pray for me. I want to pray for me, man, after this. But then what happens is, basically, he, he, he tells me to go on. It's my turn. So I go on. He kind of lifts it for me. I go, it goes on my chest. And I'm like, okay. Okay. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on then. He's like, one. And he's like, it goes down. And I'm like, and he goes, two. But as he says two, I'm like, <laughs> And I'm like, and I'm like, no, he's like, come on, two. It's not moving. It's not moving. I'm like, Ugh. It's not moving. And he obviously helps me, he lifts it back up, and that was it, me. That was me done. But what but literally, when it became too much for me, it, I couldn't I couldn't lift up the, the weight. And this is how some of us are with our burden, that our burden has become too heavy for us that we can't no longer lift it up. We no longer are able to lift up and, and carry this thing to the point that some of you today can't carry this thing and you're turning, to, you're turning into things. I mean, like you're turning over to things, looking for things to help you out, looking for things to help you sort this thing out. Most of us, I mean, not most of us, some people here today, shall I say, that you have turned to alcohol. You start to drinking again. The little vodka and Red Bull. <laughs> Amen for salvation. <laughs> You've turned back to alcohol or the little bottle of wine. You've turned back to this. Some people here, you've turned to drugs. You've turned to cigarettes as a way to calm your anxiety. You've turned to weed as a way to, t to calm down these things. Most of us here, what about going back to old relationships, shall I say? See, we're in lockdown. And the burden of depression and loneliness is kicking in. Where people are in their house, they're not married. That's how you need, you need, well, you need to get married anyway. Well, you should have got married before, but hey. But simply that people are in lockdown and now they're lowering down their standards. They're texting. They're seeing people's Instagram. They're texting all boyfriends, all girlfriends. What about old habits? Going back to old habits old websites that you used to visit before salvation. TV shows that you now watch. Netflix, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime, these things are, are there. What about all of these things? What about your music? Your music slowly changed from gospel hydration. <laughs> it's slowing, it's slowly going to, towards Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. All of these music that you used to listen to. See, the reality is that God is saying to us, there are burdens that we're carrying, and, we, and God is saying to us right now that we need to give it to him. See, God wants us to give, us, to give him our burden. See, we need, so we need to give God our burden, should I say, or should I say, we must give God our burden. See, God is able to carry us when we give our burdens over to him. See, most of us are like, we give God our, we, we understand that we must give our burden. We can't hold on to it. But the problem with some of us is that we simply don't trust that God is going to take care of us. Most of us here, it's like, we pray and we give it to God. And as soon as we finish, we take it back, right back up the table. Most of you guys have become so good at it. It's like, Father, Lord, I pray that you just give me, you give me peace. Let me overcome my anxiety. Okay, what, 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 what's going to happen to me? You take it right back. You take the thing right back. I spoke to another man um, that I play football with. I play football on the Tuesdays with some guys. Uh, met, that's a way for me to meet some of the guys in Crawley. Um, so I met this young man. He's only 24. He's married. He's got three kids. Um, but he's always, he, he's, he's always, he's got like, he's always, um, He's always like looking around him, like he's suspicious of things. And then I remember one night we finished the game, we lost the game. I can't go into that. Why well, we lost the game? Some of the, some people are here anyway. But we lost the game, and basically what happened is, so I'm talking to him in the car park, and I'm I'm talking to him, and he begins to open up, and he begins to tell me that you know he suffers from depression, he suffers from anxiety, but basically he's saying that the only way I can handle this Ev, is if I smoke weed. If, 
only way I can handle this is I'm smoking weed. But the problem I'm having is it's affecting my relationship with my kids. It's, just, it's affecting my relationship with my wife. I believe, I, I think his wife was a, is a Christian. She goes to church. And he's like, I don't go to church. And as he begins to open up, he said, he's telling me he's been, to, he's been in jail a few times. He's had fights around the area. And the only way for him to keep peace is if he smokes weed. And as I begin to minister to him, I begin to tell him about Jesus. I begin to tell him that, you know, you can give this to God and God can transform you. Yeah. You, can be a, you can hand it over to God and God is able to transform you. And, you know, we're speaking, we end up going home. I don't speak to him in weeks or months, shall I say. Basically, he says, you know, due to the lo- um, COVID and I'm shielding, my little daughter's got some health difficulties, I'm not going to see anybody. So he changes his number. I don't get to speak to him for, for a few months. Randomly, I, I say to myself, let, let me call him again, because usually I call him, it just doesn't go through. I, I send him texts, it don't go through. So I end up calling him, and he ends up picking up, and he's talking to me. He's like, hey, hey Ev, how's, what's going on? You know, um, so much has happened doing the thing. And then, he, and then he says, but... That night that you prayed for me, I mean, that night that you spoke to me, I went home because we ended, we ended up dropping him home. I went home and I prayed to God and I said, God, take away this, this depression. And it, as he says this to me, he says, I spoke to him probably last month, so a few months has gone by. He said, since he's, he's done that, God has taken care of his depression and he's no longer smoking. He doesn't need it anymore. See, the reality is the moment that he gave it to God is the moment that God took care of him. See, today you're suffering with things. There's burdens on your heart. There are things that, you're, that are bringing you down, your heart's down. And God is saying to you today, give it over to me. See, the moment that you give it to me, simply I take this thing away. See, the reality is God is the answer. People are trying to look for the answer in alcohol. People are trying to look in the answer in, in the past. God is saying, I am the answer. And only if you come to me, that I will take care of your burden. See, to give our burdens to God means to pray. In the start of the psalm, it says, God says, David says to God, give ears to my prayer. Give ears to my prayer. That means he's praying to God. And it, while he's talking about his burden, he's communicating with God, he's praying to God. Some people here, you're looking for your burden to be lifted off you. You're looking for change. And God is saying to you, come to me. Come and pray to me. See, it's prayer that allows us to give our burdens to God. It's prayer that allows us to throw our burden over onto God. See, God is saying, come to me. Come to me with faith. Come to me with trust. Do not come to me with doubt. Do not come to me doubting that I can't do it. See, God is not like us. Like I said to you about Congo, I had a limit. God has no limit. Man has limits. God doesn't have no limits. There's nothing that God says, oh, that's a bit too much. I can't lift this. There's nothing God is saying, there's, there's nothing God can say and say, no, that's too much. Actually, Ev, I can't do this today. Come see me next week. Come see me next year. There's nothing because God is powerful. And God is saying to us today that God wants to carry the, your, your burden. He wants to carry it for you. See, God wants to carry it. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Casting all your cares upon God, for he cares for you. God cares for you. That's why he wants to carry it. Some of you today are thinking, does God even care? Does God even know? God knows and God cares, but he, wants, he cares about you. He wants to carry this thing, but you've got to turn around and give it to him. Yeah. Hand it over to him. Some people here, you've got to let go of this thing. You're pretending. As you come into the house of God, you're like, hello, hello. But you're wobbling. You're carrying too much things that you're wobbling. You're wobbling. Imagine, imagine you're just wobbling. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> imagine you're just wobbling. Literally wobbling. You're wobbling through your marriage. You're wobbling through your parenting. You're, worrying, you're wobbling through your friends. You're wobbling in your salvation. You're wobbling in your ministry. God is saying, I can help you. God is saying that I'm able to help you. See, when God, God is able to carry us, but he doesn't just leave it there, he takes care of us. Our main scripture says, and he shall sustain you. He shall sustain you. That means he'll keep you. He will bring you strength. 
Some people here, you're, you've been carrying this thing for so long that you're weak. You're spiritually weak. You're physically weak. Mentally, you're weak. And God is saying to you today, I can give you strength. God is saying to you today, I'm able to renew you and give you strength. I'm able to take care of you. I'm able to bring you to a place where you are back, you're on fire for God. I can bring you back to a place where literally you, you, you've got revival in you. See, God wants to bring some of you today back to where you're sp supposed to be. Some people hear the burden of guilt and, and shame. It's just wearing you down. Every time you think about doing something for God, that thing just lands on you, lands on your head. You just drop to the floor. And God today is saying to you, listen, I can take that thing away. I can restore you and bring you, bring you back to a place that you were further than you were before. See, God today wants to bring that to us. He wants to do something new in, in your life, something different. God is saying to us today that he wants us to... He, he, he wants to bring something new in us. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to 29. I'm not sure if I gave it to the people, but forgive me if I didn't. Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? He, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And those who have no might, he increases their faith. That's the God that we serve. The God, the God that is able to bring people that are weak and bring them to a place where they have strength, that they have peace. He said, I love, um, Pastor Brandon preached a, a banger. Let me just put it that way. He put, preached a banger last Wednesday. And the reality is he was saying, listen, God can use anyone that's unstable. If you're unstable, if you're wobbling, God can still use you. God can still bring something new in you. God can still bring strength to you. Do not leave here without go. Do not leave here with your burden. Put it this way. Let's not, do not leave here with your burden. Some of you have carried your burden in. Leave it here tonight. Some of you guys have, oh, it's in your living room or, your, or, or in your, I don't know where you're having, you're watching church right now. And God is saying to you, leave it there. Or just leave it outside. Let the bin man take it. Yeah. God is saying to us today, we need to leave it here. Not only does he gives us strength, but he allows the righteous to never fall. Listen, God is saying he won't allow you to fall. He won't allow you to fall. See, when we're in God, he does not allow us to fall. Many times people are falling because they're outside of God. They're outside of God's promise. They're outside of God's will for them. Because sin has crept in. Because their flesh has been enticed by their sin. The sin of the world is just sin. And, it's a, and it keeps tripping them over. It keeps hindering them from moving forward. There are people who you're crying to move forward. You're crying for changes. And the reality is you're, you're still carrying that weight of sin in your life. You're still living that lifestyle. That young man was in a life of sin. And it kept tripping him over, kept tripping him over to the point that he had multiple court cases. And he's telling me, I, I don't want to go to jail. And I'm saying to him, listen, you've got to give it over to God. You've got to give this thing over to God. See, it's only in him that God makes us righteous. It's only in him that God is able to make us right. So I, I said at the start, when we come to God with our burden, listen, he unburdens us. And gives us rest. Let me close. Some people here, you're looking for rest. Let's keep it 100. You're looking for rest. You're looking for a place to rest. You're tired of doing this. You're tired of being religious. You're tired of saying, I'm fine, but you're not fine. You're tired of saying, Give, putting up a smile when inside. You're sad. You're tired of these things. And God today is saying, I can unburden your worries. I can unburden your sin. I can unburden your depression and I can give you rest. There's a machine. I'm not going to say what it is because I have a history of saying things not right. Um, but there's a machine. I think someone said this before, but there's a machine basically that turns human waste and um, sewage into water and electricity. It's actually owned by Bill Gates, I believe it is. And what this machine does, it takes human waste, let's put it this way, keep it clean, it's Wednesday, 
Um, and basically what it does, it basically turns it into water and electricity to the point that someone, you can drink it. You can literally drink this stuff or use it for electricity, how you, however you want to use it for. And as I, that made me think is as we give our burden to God, God exchanges it. He unburdens it by exchanging it. See, it's through Christ that we are able to be changed. It's through Christ that God is able to take this burden away from him. So you are looking for, for rest in your mind. You are looking for rest in your heart. And you are looking for rest in your soul. The Bible is saying, come to Christ. The Bible says in John 8, 3, 6, um, John 8, 36, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. See, when you come to Christ, he makes you free. He exchanges things. He exchanges things. Before, you're carrying all these human waste, all these sin. And God is saying to come into this machine, which is Christ, and I will change you to the point that you become pure, that, to the point that you become righteous, to the point that you become righteous, that I can basically, you'll never be able to fall because I've got my hand on you. See, God today is saying to some of you today, come to me. You're heavy with stuff. You need to be coming to me. I'm able to give you rest. Listen, do not leave here with your burden. Do not leave here with your burden. Do not allow your burden to just crush you. God wants to give you rest. Amen. Can I have every eye closed and every head bowed, please? Amen. I spoke about giving our burdens over to God. Listen, God cares about you. There are some people here, you're thinking, does God even care about me? Can I tell you today, God cares about you. And the reason why God cares about you so much is because he paid the price for your sin. See, God loved you more when you was in your, in your mess, in your sin, and came down, stepped down from eternity into a woman came out, lived 33 years and died the most crucial death so that you can be made right with God. See, Christ is the bridge. And today, I want to give you the opportunity. Maybe you don't know God like that. You don't have a relationship with God. You know about God, but you don't know him personally. Can I tell you today, God wants to have a relationship with you. And today, may, today maybe you're not saved. And God wants to give you the opportunity to be saved. I want to lead you into a prayer. Repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Help me to know you and live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining with us online. We hope that this message both spoke to you and encouraged you on your walk with Jesus. Now, if you've just prayed to accept Christ, then we'd like to congratulate you on making the best decision that you'll ever make. We'd love to send you some resources that will help you on your journey, so please click the link below the video and someone from church will be in touch. From everyone at Potter's House Wands of Church, we hope you have a great week and look forward to joining with you again.